Hi everyone, welcome to this episode of Kuiper Labs. In this video today, we're going to be discussing organic versus inorganic compounds. Okay, so from a forensic point of view, the being able to identify the substances that we come across as trace evidence, or that in a sample of, of from an item or things like that, is a, is a really important aspect of it. Being able to classify substances according to their type, and then that also can dictate what further analysis that we might do. And so being able to categorize uh, substances we test as organic versus inorganic um, is a really useful first step. So let's kick off first by thinking about substances we define as organic. Okay, so they substances that are organic contain um, primarily or mostly uh, carbon and hydrogen. Okay, and they also combust or burn in the presence of air to form, um, depending on how much oxygen is present, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, or carbon as soot. Okay, we've looked at combustion equations before. Okay, so substances that are organic, um, now it's, it's different from a kind of an everyday use of the word organic, like you might see, you know, organic farming or organic vegetables or things like that. Okay, um, that, that this is kind of the chemistry sort of definition for it. Um, so substances that are or, um, organic um, are often um, uh, natural in origin, um, but can be man-made. Okay, so from a forensic point of view, uh, a lots of the ones that we would be considering are natural in origin. So some of the examples that we might have, um, and we're going to look at in, in some level of detail, we've got carbohydrates, we've got proteins, uh, we've got lipids. There's some examples of different um, things that we would come across that are you know, natural in origin that might be in present in samples that we're testing. But lots of organic substances, organic compounds that we come across um, would be man-made. You know, so things like, um, um, you know, when we're talking about families like alkanes and we're talking about esters, although some esters, you know, esters can be natural in origin, but we often synthesize them. Um, so man-made being synthetic, okay, that we actually produce them in the lab based on our knowledge of chemistry and how these things operate. Okay, and so we're going to, a little bit later on, we're going to talk through, all right, what are some different types of organic substances we might come across in the lab? Um, and how can we identify those? Okay, now let's take a look at substances we would define as inorganic. Okay, now you might just say, okay, well, basically everything that's not organic, um, but that's that's not really very specific. Um, so what we would say is typically don't contain carbon. Okay, now there are some exceptions here. Okay, um, but what we would say is accept things that are perhaps metallic, slash ionic, e.g. carbonate or hydrogen carbonate. Uh, we've also got um, carbon monoxide um, or cyan um, cyanides, which is the CN minus ion. Okay, so they're kind of the exceptions. So that they are things that contain carbon, but we consider in the inorganic group. Okay, and, and but, but also I want you to notice that except, with except, the exception of this one, that they only contain carbon and not hydrogen. And the hydrogen here is not a, a carbon-hydrogen bond, it's a, a proton that's attached on the side here that's easily removed, as we've looked at in acidic environment before. Okay, so we're thinking, so organic, in, so inorganic, we're thinking typically not containing carbon. Okay, so that often would include ionic compounds. Um, it also includes uh, some other types of um, covalent compounds called co covalent network substances, which we haven't really looked at in a great amount of detail in the past, um, which is things like um, diamond or silicon dioxide in the case of, say, sand and things like that. Okay, so what they have is that covalent network um, substances are fully covalently bonded throughout the structure. So not in molecules, not molecular. Okay, so remember that when we're talking about molecular, we're thinking about um, things that are, um, uh, so, you know, we're discrete kind of little chunks of information. 
um, whereas um, where it's fully covalently bonded all the way through. This is one kind of mega structure. Okay, um, so um, what we, we we can kind of we're, we're going to compare the properties of these different substances because then that is going to dictate what sort of tests that we're able to do. Okay, so we're going to compare these two substances on their properties. So, so draw up this sort of a table in your notes here. Okay, so with organic substances, we're typically thinking about low melting point or boiling point substances. Whereas for inorganic, we're thinking about usually high melting point and boiling point, typically. Okay, and certainly by comparison here. Okay, that we're thinking that they're usually insoluble, in organic substances are usually insoluble in water, but soluble in organic liquids. Okay, so um, ethanol or hexane or other, other things like that, whereas we're typically thinking the other way around here. So usually soluble in water, whereas insoluble in organic liquids. Because okay, that's going to affect what we can do in wet chemistry techniques in the lab, how we might um, structure them. Okay, um, so when um, so that they would typically decompose or break down to form carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, or carbon, and then if for inorganic substances, if they're flammable, don't decompose. To form any, any of these kind of carbon sort of substances. Okay, so we've kind of got three distinct points here. Main, that is mainly carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, but especially thinking about the basis of carbon atoms. Um, um, now, inorganic substances may contain carbon, but no carbon hydrogen bonds or carbon-carbon bonds, okay? So, um, let's see if I can fix that up. <clears throat> so organic substances would be mainly, um, made, primarily made up of these four atoms in some arrangement or some kind of, um, and, you know, whereas inorganic substances, if they do contain carbon, that they don't contain these things, okay? Because, for example, carbon dioxide is inorganic, but it doesn't contain either of these things. It does contain carbon. Okay. Um, so organic substances are covalent molecular, so they exist in discrete so, um, discrete molecules. Um, and then what we've got is we might have ionic covalent network, and we may also have molecular. Okay, so it could um, could fall in any of these kind of categories depending on which substance that we're talking about. Okay, thanks very much for watching. Bye for now.